Hi, welcome. Um, last night we had the Wednesday night meditation um, group and I forgot to push record. So this is, I guess you could call it the Thursday uh, morning meditation session, you know, the following day. I wanted to uh, kind of cover what we talked about last night in the meditation and do, do a shorter meditation um, this morning. And um, I wanted to do it while it's fresh in my mind because I, I really feel what I was talking about is very important. It has to do with the ego and uh, truth, you know, something that we've been uh, talking about for the next last several weeks um, in the meditation um, gatherings on Wednesday nights. Um, but I wanted to talk about them in reference to the, the hindrances, the five hindrances of, of that we find in Vera, Theravada Buddhism. Um, these are the hindrances to the completeness in our life and also to our meditation practices, the things that bother us and can make life difficult from really all aspects, whether it's our formal meditation practice or what we're doing on a daily basis. Um, I would like to put emphasis on uh, one of them, uh, one of the emotions that is not necessarily uh, written as part of the five hindrances, and that is the state of fear. And I, I would like to discuss how un this uncomfortable emotion may be a bigger part of our lives than we think. Um, and then we'll, uh, I'd like to uh, kind of follow that up with a, a tool that we can use to um, work with these emotions, and namely um, the area of the ego, um, or what we call in in um, many spiritual traditions as selfing or self, uh, the, the self, the small self, as opposed to the large self of self-discovery or self-realization. So we're talking about the this small self. Um, whether we believe that the self is an illusion or not, um, which it, it is, it's, it's created within the mind, but we can use the term ego, uh, and that's what I, the term that I just happened to choose to use, you know, um, using the term ego as more of a Freudian term, more of a, uh, uh, something that we're used to hearing in this, this time period that we live in, rather than the self, which can be kind of confusing for some people, right? Um, so as long, I'd like to say that as long as we're working towards a spiritual ambition with truth, we are showing ourselves uh, that we are on our path, the path that we uh, were created to be on. So what is the spiritual ambition? You know, it's, it's really unique to the individual, um, what their purpose, what they feel like their purpose in life. Um, like a goal of some sort, and these things change all of the time. You know, it should be something that we uh, are very passionate about, that we uh, might be good at or learn to be good at, something that we we feel will benefit ourselves and, and benefit everybody in the world, um, and something that we we love to work with, that we're really drawn to, to work with. That's what I call a, our spiritual ambition, something that, um, uh, inspires us, you know, to, to, to live and be a part of uh, this world. And number two, what is, what is truth? And truth is our individual truth, you know, that we are our belief that what we're doing is the right thing and um, that, it is, that it can change uh, ourselves and it can change the world. It's something that we really believe in. So spiritual, uh, fulfilling our spiritual ambition with our truth. So when a person finds their ambition in the form of a goal or something that they want to accomplish, uh, they, they can direct all of their energy towards the completion of that goal. And then, but again, once that goal is accomplished, the human being immediately looks to find something else to replace that goal. They replace that goal with another one. And um, when this is done, in a, in, in a moral, worthy way, um, and our goals are chosen and completed um, with this in mind, this is really a part of our world. This is, this is us living in the world 
what in in the way that we should be living to fulfill one goal after another a worthy goal and the the idea behind this is that the the truth aspect of this can be different for each person the truth is a mental concept of what they uh a person believes is the most important thing in their lives at the time and they can we can spend you know as a human we can spend great sums of of money and wealth you know on on what we believe the truth is and um and it can really define who we are as a person um and we do that maybe too much as humans we we a name comes up and we go oh yeah that guy he used representation or that person is a representation of blah de blah you know you fill in the lines but there is one thing that can get in the way of of this whole process and it can make us feel as if we are inadequate in many different ways and that is the aspect of fear um and maybe more precisely and we'll talk about that in a moment how fear is really ego driven it's a part of the ego so a life without fear is really important for us to find our truth and, and uh, find our purpose in life with clarity um, so that we feel that we're doing the just right thing, you know, with our existence. And this can get blown out of the water by this one uh, hindrance of fear. Now, the, the five hindrances in Buddhist, in Theravada Buddhism, uh, is doubt, restlessness, and worry. Uh, well, let's, let me put them in order, you know, there, there is a logical order to this, but doubt, uh, ill will, or, or hatred, um, uh, and I'm sorry, I'm going to back up a little bit more. It, it is, it is uh, desire, number one is desire, as in all Buddhist concepts, the, the feeling that uh, the Buddhists strongly believed and taught that desire is really the root of all of our, our suffering in the world. So the number one hindrance is desire. Um, and then it, uh, we're looking at ill will or anger, um, sloth and torpor, which is fatigue, mental, physical fatigue, um, doubt, which I <laughs> earlier mentioned, uh, doubt in our abilities, doubt in other people's abilities, so on, and, and uh, restlessness and, and worry, um, that restlessness in the mind, the worriness in the mind. And interestingly, fear isn't really mentioned uh, although obviously it's very, very important, um, but it does play a part, a major part in at least four of these hindrances. And let me just cover this as, as, as quickly as I can, that fear um, is a hindrance, really the hindrance to, un, to, uh, to our happiness and to our feeling complete in life, feeling complete in the moment. And it comes in several ways, like, so for example, desire, the fear of not having enough or the fear of losing what we have and thus needing to get it again is a huge part of desire. Um, we desire to have something and we fear that we, we will never have it or we'll fear that we might not have enough of it. But when we do have what we finally desire, when there's a fear of losing it and a fear of having to regain it again, like somebody that is 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 really um poised and you know they're wanting to make a ton of money they want to become a millionaire and once they become a millionaire there's the fear of losing that um protecting what they they're protecting their assets it happens all the time um so that is a, a huge amount of fear for a lot of people you know fear based on losing what they have gained through their their relentless desires now in the area of, uh, let's look at ill will. Um, ill will, uh, the way I was uh, taught it by Bhante Gudarantana was that uh, is when our willingness is, is broken. Now, and if we can lose our willingness to move forward in life because of our fears, it happens all the time. Also, we can begin to hate others and those that we have fears about. Um, ill will does that have that, that hatred element about it too. Um, hating uh, 
somebody uh, that we have a relationship, hating ourselves to a certain extent, our willingness is all about hating this. Um, also, so maybe we can, you can agree with me and, and take a look at our ability to uh, hate or be not in the uh, in the flow with with those people that expose our weaknesses, and this should actually be a good thing for us. If somebody can expose our weaknesses, this would be a good thing. But not it hurts to hear that, so we can be very fearful of that as well. Um, even our relationships with other other people, which are the probably one of the most difficult things for us to do, is to maintain these positive relationships relationships. Um, for example, we can meet someone new and have a fear uh, about them based on memories that this person reminds us of another person, um, somebody with familiar, familiar, I'm sorry, familiar features um, that uh, somebody that has hurt us in the past somehow, maybe somebody that has pointed out our weaknesses in the past looks like this person that we just met. So we might have a fear of connecting with that person and, and and push away from that. So all of these things are things that we should be aware of, you know, for for our own spiritual benefit um, to be aware of these things. Restlessness and worry. How does fear fit into that? And this common hindrance is really based on fear itself. It's worry itself can be a container for fear. Um, Worry is the mind creating a future on assumptions, right? Fear itself is false evidence that appears real. So it's all of these aspects, uh, the worry that we have, day-to-day -day worry, um, and fear itself is all a creation of the mind. We create, uh, we create this fear ourselves. Now, in the area of doubt, this other hindrance of doubt, Doubting that we can make a difference uh, in ours or another person's uh, life um, by following living our truth. This is actually the fear of failure. Doubting that we can make a difference is a, the, the fear of failure. So if we fear failure, we won't even try to um, get off the starting line, you know, to, uh, to fulfill a goal that we feel is worthy. Um, to change our lives and the lives of others. And this is not to mention the fear that our efforts will basically be done for nothing so that we, we, we feel as we could feel as if we're wasting a lot of energy trying to fulfill this, this worthy goal. And not to confuse things that life is not just about goals, but it's about um, our ambition and, and our uh, inspiration and um, understanding that we are limitless in many ways. Um, it's, we're not looking at goals like a desire, something that we are trying to bring something into our lives to make us better, because that is actually the ego stepping in, into the way of this whole process. Our goal might be to um, to to teach meditation, my goal is to raise people's consciousness so that they understand themselves at a, at a deeper level through the practice of meditation. I, so, that's, so I teach meditation. I've been doing that for a couple of decades because that's what I believe in. And your, your goals, your worthy goals might be, spiritual goals we'll call them, might be something completely different. You just have to look at and, and see what it is for yourself. It's, it's different for everybody. Now, the basis behind all of this these hindrances and this fear is the ego. And the ego is behind, really behind all uncomfortable states, all negative emotions, including us thinking that the ego itself should be hated, that the, that the ego is our enemy. That kind of thinking is the ego's work itself right there. The ego being the self made part of us that hates to be in the flow of life. So anytime that we're, things aren't working out for us, it's because the ego is interfering with it. Um, and the reason I'm talking about this is because the, the definition of the ego is very difficult for a lot of people um, because it's an individualized thing in many cases. Um, as a result, 
that when the ego is interfering, things don't work out for us. We, we can't find our truth. Um, in fact, if you have trouble um, defining the ego, it is the ego that is not allowing itself to be defined. And that's how elusive the ego is. It's very cunning, but it's not our enemy. It is a part of, of us. And it deserves really more than anything to be made aware of. We, we should understand the ego. Um, the ego doesn't want us to understand it. And that's where meditation and going within comes in. The more we go in into this, this presence that we are, the more the ego is revealed. The ego does not like that. It's like a separate entity. I mean, it, it help, it's helpful. Um, I find that it's helpful to look at the ego as a separate entity that one that hates it when we are when when our life is working so it hates meditation because it feels as if it will be discovered which it will but it also feels as if it will die and the ego has us convinced wholeheartedly that if it dies our body what we often feel is us will die as well and it's so it's very scary for a lot of people in reality when we discover what the ego is we actually begin to live. So please keep that in mind. Now, when we go within, when we meditate or walk in nature or do something that we uh, really enjoy doing, when we're with loved ones and we, we find this presence, when we really are not worried about the past or the future and this present moment awareness is settling. I mean, we're settled into it. And we really feel like this is the place that we're, we're home now. The, he, the ego um, will do whatever it can to pull us out of that. Um, but when we do that consistently, such as a formal practice of meditation, we come into this presence, this present moment awareness, the stillness that is really our true nature. The ego uh, will do whatever it can to pull us away from that, as mentioned, but that's the time that we can le really learn what the ego is. And oftentimes when that happens, we are totally unaware. Um, so we could say that the ego is created through, through our unaware thinking process. When we are thinking of the future and we think that we can't accomplish something in the future, that's actually the ego stepping in there. Um, so we are actually, very important, we're actually thinking the ego into existence. And that's why there's the, the talk about the self being an illusion. Um, because the ego is not a true identity. It's, it's something that is created within the mind, just like fear itself. That aspect of fear is really the ego uh, raising havoc <laughs> with our minds. So one of the best spiritual practices as a person that we, we can do is constantly ask ourselves, what is the ego? We want to define the ego as much as we can to clearly define the ego each step of the way through life, day by day, even hour by hour or moment by moment. And so at this moment, ask yourself, is there an aspect of the ego, a part of the ego that is speaking to the present, uh, the still presence that you are? That is actually, is there the ego that is actually trying to interfere with the still presence that you are at this moment or any given moment in this practice? So this is a type of self-inquiry that we, we can practice. We can actually do it in our meditation too. Um, for example, if we're sitting in meditation and there's a, a part of us that says, um, I don't know why, but I just feel like stopping this meditation because I have a lot of things to do. That's how I was when I first started meditating. Um, it was um, quite a while ago where I was sitting in my first meditation. I remember it very, very well. Um, I was uh, sitting on the edge of a trailer at this, this little farm that I had bought. And um, I said, I'm going to meditate now and i sat there didn't even last five minutes and i thought well this is 
this is ridiculous because I have things to do. I have things that I have to take care of, you know? And um, it was go, go, go. I didn't have time to meditate. That was the first thing that came into my mind. And that, I, I didn't know it at the time, but I do know it now, but that was part of the ego that was really being scared that I, I'm going to find out something about it. So I got up off the meditation, you know, sitting, yeah, I was just sitting on the edge of a trailer, you know, a, a utility trailer. And I got up and I said, well, that was interesting experience. <laughs> Didn't last probably two and a half minutes before I had to get up and start doing something. Um, the only difference is, is that I went back the next day at the same time and I did it again. And then the next day again and again and again and again. So that consistency um, really led me into um, uh, the, the practice that I had developed and eventually, you know, seeing the benefits of meditations. So, so wholeheartedly that I began teaching meditation to others. So again, day by day, moment by moment, ask yourself at this moment, is there an aspect of the ego or a part of the ego that is speaking to the still presence that I am? Is there a part of the ego that is speaking to the still presence that I am? And if we're not absolutely content, happy with life, that um, we're not, we feel as if we're not in the flow, that there are things that are bothering us, there's restlessness and worry, excessive desire, um, our, our willingness you know, to, to be in the flow of life. Um, and, and there's a, a amount of doubt within ourselves, our doubt in our abilities and doubt in the ability of, us, of others. That is the ego. Um, and it's something that can be cleared up, but it's an individual process. I can't, and nobody can say, you know, just disregard the ego, wipe the ego away from, from your personality or from, uh, from that area of consciousness that, it, that we feel that it might be a part of. It wipe the ego clean and then you will live your life that, the way that it's meant to be lived. Another person can't do that. It's up to you to be able to define the ego under your terms, what, how the ego is affecting your life, and to be able to, know, to spot it and remember that the ego is not your enemy because any kind of hatred or fear of the ego is actually the work of the ego. That's how cunning it is. That's how smart it is. So, but we are, we can overcome that. And uh, I've just decided that this is getting a little bit long and I don't want, I'm not going to guide you through a meditation at this time. I would like you to guide yourself through a meditation. That meditation would be to really tune in to any kind of discomfort that comes up in the, the, that precious time that you set aside for your personal meditation. Set that aside, sit in formal practice of meditation and ask yourself, what part of the ego might be interfering with this still presence that is really who I am? The stillness, this, this, um, this silent mind that is between the thoughts that seems to uh, guide us to the worst of times when, when it's there. That when we notice a distinct difference between the, the worry of the future and the memory of the past, and when all of that is set aside, not that it's bad or evil or anything, it's set aside and we are in that presence. What could interfere with that when we are in formal meditation? And that is probably uh, most, most definitely in some cases, uh, the aspect of the ego that is coming in there. Um, it'll be very, very tricky. Sometimes it'll be hard to um, identify because it's been doing this this trickery for so long, you know, but it, it is, um, once we are aware of it and can identify it in our formal practice and we can do the same thing outside of meditation practice and we can spot the ego all of the time and it will absolutely lose its power and drain its power and it'll be a life-changing experience. So, um, let me know how this works out for you. Let me know any comments or, um, 
suggestions or, or how, it, how it feels for you in your practice. And um, I love you and we'll see you next week or something like that. Oh, just a side note, um, the Wednesday night meditation at the end of uh, 2021 or beginning of 2022 will be moving to Insight Timer Live. And if you want more information about that, let me know. But uh, each Wednesday night at seven o'clock, um, these meditation uh, moments, we'll call them, uh, will be moved to Insight Timer. So d download the app and um, I will see you there next year. But don't worry about that until um, at the end of the end of uh, December here. And that'll be, I think January 5th will be the first date for that. Thank you.